I have a cold. <laughs> um, once again, I'm sick and I seem to be getting sick every month and it's because the kids keep bringing things home from school and it's making me struggle but i didn't want it to stop me from making this video because you guys interacted so well with my um my instagram story so i had to be here so first of all um rest in peace to the queen queen elizabeth has passed and um for those of you that don't know i actually lived in england for six years of my life as a child from the ages of seven ish to about 12 ish um yeah i basically stayed um stayed in england so she was my queen at one point and so yeah i do have a little bit of um like a sadness about it you know she yeah it was one of those things but i thought in honor of her and like in respect to her passing i would answer some questions about the time that we lived in england and what it was like and what you guys would like to know so i'll be putting pictures in um randomly of like our time there and you guys will see them um as i'm talking but for now i want to say thank you to each and every one of you that interacted with my post you guys are so amazing and for those of you that have youtube channels i will make sure to link them down below so please guys go and support them too anyway let's get into this video um so like i said i stayed in england as a child we stayed in an area called Nottinghamshire, which is not like the most well-off area or anything like that, but that's where we stayed. I had lots of friends um, and I really had a great time staying there. So I'm going to answer the questions first and anything extra I have to say, I'll say it after that in case the questions cover pretty much everything. So the first question is, um, is England a friendly country? Do they treat you differently if you're not British? So what I found interesting, and I love this question, um, and what I found interesting um, about England was that being a foreigner, I felt like they were much nicer to me. Um, but as like I started to develop an accent and it became harder to d differentiate whether or not I was from there, they weren't as nice. So that I thought was interesting. I don't think they're not a friendly country. I mean, I didn't have um, any like real problems in terms of like friendliness and things like that. But as a foreigner, I felt like they treated us really well. Um, and yeah, I think they treat, I think they can treat foreigners better than they treat the people that live there. But I think it also depends on just where you go, the timing of where you go. And I think this is like kind of the same all over the world. It just depends what area you go to and who you end up encountering because it's about the people, not the place. So yeah, for me personally, I thought they were friendly. I was a child, but I never felt, um, I never felt like the people that worked at the shop, so the people in the streets treated me like any weird way. I actually thought they were very kind towards me. Um, for example, there was this bakery that I always used to go buy like a baguette, half a baguette that they put like pizza toppings on. Oh, it was my favorite. Um, and it was like 70 pence. So as a child, I could walk and I would go and buy that after school every day. And that guy was so sweet that like in the beginning, he would always give me like an extra one for free. Um, but then I think as time progressed and I started getting like um, a British accent and things like that, they, um, they weren't as nice. <laughs> so I think that's very interesting. Then um, they're asking question number two, what are the pros and cons of living in the UK? So I, I don't like questions like this because I feel like it's all dependent on the person. So for me personally, um, the cons would have been that it's really cold all the freaking time. Um, and the things that come with those types of winters is like a lot of hard work. Um, I do think the cost of living is much higher. Um, so it is hard to make ends meet. I know both my parents had to work full-time jobs. My dad worked in the evening, my mom worked during the day just to like get us by, like just, just get us by. 
Um, and I know that like my mom used to go and deliver newspapers as well to get like an extra income. Um, yeah, we did a lot of things like that. So I do think those are some of the cons. The pros is that I do feel it is a bit safer. I mean, I was a child and I was able to catch the bus with my friend at 10 years old and like go to like a different area and go to the public pools by ourselves and I never felt threatened in any way and I think another one of the pros is that there is a lot more things to buy um like same like America compared to South Africa I mean you have access and affordability to a lot more things so those would be my pros and cons I think another thing is that as a con um as a pro and a con actually as a pro the schools are a lot better a lot nicer a lot cleaner a lot more modern a better upkept but as a con the level of education to me is way worse than in South Africa. Like we have a very high standard of education here, whether you think so or not. Um, I was excelling in England because the work was not nearly up to what I was used to. Um, so I was like top of my grade like multiple times. Um, whereas yeah, the moment I came back, I struggled. I struggled. The level of education was so much harder, yeah like so much more intense so i think pros and cons really depend on the person and where they're coming from and what how it affects them but those would be the few that i can think of off, off the top of my head so yeah and question number three uh some people say we have too many public holidays yeah how did royal pomp and ceremony affect your life so these things didn't really affect me. Um, she's basically talking about the different royal ceremonies and how it affected me staying in England. It didn't really affect me because I was a child. So I, I didn't know much of what was going on. I didn't really bother with it. Um, in terms of public holidays, I definitely think South Africa has a lot and I love it. Um, but England did have the, they call it bank holidays as well. Um, and I remember things like the Royal Jubilee was a really big deal and things like that. There were a lot of like things that revolved around those sorts of things. But um, I don't think it was stuff that directly affected me as a child, I would say. Like, I mean, you go with the flow. Um, I never felt like any of the stuff affected my parents' work or like, like we were off school or things like that. It was very rare. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really think it affected me at all. So I was a kid, it was hard to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, question number four. Looking back at your experiences, do you feel your children have more to see and do here in SA? This is a tricky question because I am such a sucker for my country. I love South Africa so much and I am such a proud South African. So for me, um i felt like being there as a child i did there was a lot of things to do just like there is here but it's different um so for example back there me and my friends or me and my brother could go and play in the park we could go play in the swamp we could like literally do whatever we wanted there was no like stress um, of us being alone in the streets. Whereas here, I would not allow my kids to do that. I would not allow them to go to parks alone. I would not allow them to go play in the woods or in the swamps or by the rivers by themselves, things like that. So there's a difference in that. But in terms of being a child there, I felt like a lot of the, the culture revolved around like going to pubs and um things like that and for me personally that doesn't drink as much um like we didn't do that often because my parents also weren't like they'd rather be at home with the people they know and stuff like that so we didn't like grow up in that like pub culture you know because the kids were allowed in there and things like that but we didn't do that so i think if i went back as an adult i would enjoy it more than um being there as a child um so in terms of having things to do here versus having things to do there i think it's it's complicated to say because um i feel like it's important for like my kids to get um like life experience education 
um, and I feel like you can never do that in just one place so whether they go there and do it just there or learn what's just here it's debatable so with them I would want them to be able to have South Africa is their home because there's a lot of culture here. We are so, so rich in culture. You can literally go anywhere and still learn life experiences and life um, lessons and different cultures. Um, and then still travel to different countries and learn more through those experiences too. Um, I don't think I would want to take my kids there, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't want to bring them up there. I'd much rather bring them up here. And that's just my personal preference. That's all it is. In terms of, I think they have more like museums, maybe things like that. But um, but I don't know. I, I don't see. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't do enough as a child there. But I don't. I th I don't think it makes such a big difference, in my opinion. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that. Um. How is the culture and are the people racist or just normal? So the culture is very different to ours. There was a lot of adjustments. Um, they're not as culturally rich as South Africa. I mean, we've got like how many different cultures? They've got their own uh, European version, uh, European culture. Um, so there is things that's very different that you have to adapt to. In terms of racism, um, I don't think so. I think there are racist people everywhere, um, but I wouldn't say that I would refer to the country as a racist country. Um, for example, when I was at school, um, you weren't allowed to say the word colored, just like in America. It was seen as like a bad thing and that made me struggle a lot with my identity. Um, so I had to refer to myself as biracial, um, things like that, you know, they don't really refer to color easily and they don't see color as much as what we see it in South Africa. So in terms of racism, I think there are people that are racist everywhere, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're more racist than, than South Africa in my experience. Um, what was so difficult about living that side? What adjustments did you have to make? So we had to make a lot of adjustments. Um, it was, it's extremely different, extremely different to living in South Africa. Um, the food is completely different. I found that we had a lot of longing for our food and we would literally go out of our way to try and find anything that was close to what we had back home. I don't know if that's just like a like a home thing, you know, you grew up with it, so you're kind of always longing for it. But it was very hard to come across anything similar to what South Africans are having. You had to go to speciality stores or you had to go to, oh, you had to order online. But that's basically what we did anyway. Um, Adjusting to the schooling was very difficult for me. Like I said, the level of education was very different and it was, I didn't find it challenging at all. And um, and so for me, that was also, also a strange experience. Um, I did feel like there was a lot more bullying in England than I've ever experienced. Um, and that was really bad for me. Um, but you kind of just figured it out. Um, what other adjustments? My parents working one day shift, one night shift was also a big adjustment, but I mean, you kind of just deal. Um, I had to spend a lot of time with my brother who was very young at that age. And you know, like I'd have to literally walk him to school in one direction and come back and then walk to my school and in the afternoons come back because my dad would be sleeping because he works at night and my mom would um, be at work. So it was a lot of adjustments a lot of growing up very fast um there were funny things that we found like <laughs> when where we stayed was kind of like there was a dead end with houses we were on this corner and um the house here could basically you could see into each other's houses first thing we did put curtains up right literally the people across the road sent their son to come and speak to my father and ask my father what are we doing in our house and why do we have curtains up and we were like, what? 
that's what are you talking about and they were like no are we selling drugs are we doing drugs why are we putting curtains up like they literally didn't care like they would just be willy willy nilly naked like walking around their houses with no curtains up like that to me was so weird um another thing i found weird was the clicks um there was never a like in south africa you you tend to gravitate towards the people that share culture with you or share race with you or share similarities right there it was completely different like you had your it girls and the ones that surrounded them you had your nerds you had but there was never any sort of racial culture or similarities involved it was literally just who clicked and who didn't click um but like i said bullying was a really really bad day um other than that in terms of adjustments it's just basically adjusting to the language um they speak english but i mean our we were young so our accents ended up changing a lot um so the moment we started fitting in like they don't say yogurt they say yogurt then there's things that they say that is very different to how we say it and we picked up on all of these things very quickly then when we came back to south africa we got made fun of here for saying things what was strange to to my family yeah so things like that was always a weird adjustment because you think you're doing it right but then you just you go somewhere else and it's different again another thing we had to adjust to was the area we stayed in wasn't like a very good area um like i said i never never felt unsafe but um the the kids start doing things very young there well in my experience anyway um i remember seeing 12 year olds tra breaking into the houses next door and stealing old lady scooters i saw five year olds smoking i had friends at 10 years old that were on drugs and were overdosing on things so those things were really strange um they definitely advance a lot faster than what we do yeah um but yeah that was that was strange experience for me but like i said i never felt unsafe i never felt pressured into doing anything i didn't want to do i never had to get involved i could be friends with someone that was having a hard time at home and dealing with their own like stuff without having to feel like i had to be doing the same thing and i hope that makes sense like in south africa we tend to gravitate towards people in similar situations but there it never felt that way it felt like you could literally be friends with someone without without getting involved in what they were going through and still being there for them and that to me was interesting so i like that those are some of the adjustments um what are the similarities between london and sa oh that is an interesting question. I I don't actually think there are that many similarities. Um, I guess I would say that they're also very prideful people, just like we are. Um, I definitely think the drink culture, like party culture, is very similar to us. Um, they like to have a good time, so do we. Um, other than that, I would not actually say that there are a lot of similarities between England and South Africa. Uh, London itself, I, I don't know. To me, London is like such a touristy place. It gives me like Cape Town vibes, but also not. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't actually say that there are many similarities at all between England and South Africa. I think we are two very different countries, um, but I do think that the, both people can still very much enjoy each other. Um, but yeah, like for example, like there were so many South Africans living in England and things like dentistry is free. You can go to the dentist for free. And my dentist was South African. Um, uh, that's completely, their healthcare is completely different here. Yeah. Um, things like that they to me personally like the weather's different the people are different everything it's like completely different so yeah i, don't, I really don't think there are much similarities between england and south africa at all um in my experience would you move back no i personally would not 
um, I don't really feel like that was the place for me. I would definitely go back to visit. I would love to experience it as an adult. But it was just, it's just, it just didn't feel like that's where I belonged. Um, I did not do well with the fact that everything is literally grey. <laughs> it's literally cold all the time. You only have six weeks of summer and that's when your school vacation is. Um, I didn't, I love the food though and I miss the food more than anything and I miss my friends. But, um, but I would not move back to England. I feel like there is so much more potential for me living anywhere else. Like I've experienced that I don't see myself back there. Um, and I, but I would definitely go to visit. I would love to go back just to like, just to visit and have that nostalgic feeling, but I would, I would never move back. How was the cost of living that side? Very expensive it is very expensive to live there if you are coming from south africa um i don't know what the pound to the rand is now but when we came back one pound was 10 rand right so if you think in in perspective um a hundred rand was only 10 pound and let's say a two liter cold drink that time was going for two pound fifty so with a hundred rand, you could probably get like three things. Well, I guess it's not much different too, yeah. But it's increased a lot since then. Um, I think it's almost 20 rand or something now, but I'll put it in what the exchange rate is. It is really expensive to live there. Um, if you're coming from as a South African, if you have euros or pounds and you're going there, it's not so bad. But if you're going with rands, you are going to struggle. It is very high cost of living um it also depends on the areas you go to for example london will be like up there it's like the new york city of um of england um and if you go to like nottinghamshire where we were um it's not as expensive but it's still pricey like i said both my parents had to work my father worked from uh, i think it was six seven at night till five in the morning or something like that and my mother worked from six in the morning till five in the afternoon so they literally saw each other for an hour and an hour in the morning an hour in the night and then they would split and they both had to work my mother had to do her side hustles just to be able to like live there so yeah i do think the cost of living there is quite high if you're going as a south african and then i've got another question of will you go back and live in england again again no will not but i would love to go and visit for sure then uh this is the last one she says after the queen's death i just realized culture is practiced intensively always thought it was only in the movies question is it practiced all over england or in specific areas so like every country they they all have their own cultures and their own um their own things that they do it is practiced all over the country but i think it it depends um things to do with the royal family um anything like that will affect the entire country of england um and like things like them creating a bank holiday or a public holiday now for the death of the queen that will affect the entire country the royal jubilee things like that affects the entire country but there are other things that um, will differ from area to area, just like it does here. So like, for example, um, the cultures in Pretoria will be different to the cultures in Cape Town um, in terms of smaller things. And their cultures and stuff also don't relate to their race, which is very interesting. So it's not like uh, the black, well, they have their things, obviously, especially if they're descendants than from like Nigeria or wherever. There's also a lot of like Asian um, Asian people that stay there. There's a lot of, um, it's quite diverse. So they've got their things in their individual homes, but in terms of like areas, each area is also different from each other with their cultures. But there are things like all the royal, everything that's happening around the royal family right now will affect the entire country um and it's just one of those things 
and then just to add on it if anyone was wondering i have been to buckingham palace probably like three or four times um i never went inside but we were by the gates and in the park and everything quite a few times i went there with my grandfather went there with my grandmother when they came to visit I've been there with my family multiple times. I have seen a lot of London, a lot of Manchester. I've been to Manchester Stadium. Go Man United. And um, and things like that. I, I, I still very much have England in my heart. And I am obsessed with all things British. Um, but like I said, I don't think I'd move back there. Um, so yeah, I... I still have a lot of love, a lot of love for England and I think it did shape me a lot as a person but I am still very much proud South African and this is my home country and this is where I'll be. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those things. But I, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, just put them down below. I will answer them in the comments and yeah, RIP to the Queen. Um, may her soul rest in peace for real and let's just hope the best for the country and what's to come from this point on because it's all in different hands now so we'll see what happens and go from there so yeah much love to england and much love to south africans and thank you to everyone that left questions i will see you guys in our next video bye <laughs>